Now that we've seen the basics of testing library, we can start getting into some of the more interesting features and some of the features that I really like about it. So the first thing we're going to do is update our component to see something a little bit more interesting. I'm going to head over to my Hello World component and we're going to change this to make it a bit different. I'm going to delete all of the markup and I'm also going to delete all of the style, we don't need that. What we're going to do is create a button that's going to reveal a text when it's clicked. So we're going to have a button at click, it's going to set a variable to equal true which is called show and we need to have some kind of way to select this and what we're going to do is add a role and this is something testing library really encourages you to do. Roles are good for accessibility and something a lot of people don't really think about and by encouraging us to use roles in our test it's going to make our components more accessible for people that are using something like a screen reader. I'm going to call this one show text because that is the role of this button, it's going to show the text or something like that. And now we're going to go ahead and actually render the text as well inside of here. Let's save this one off and our test is of course still going to pass because we are still rendering that message. So let's go ahead now and create our data function and that's going to have our show variable. So let's just go ahead and return an object. We're going to set show to false and of course this is going to create a failing test. And everything should now be failing, apparently not. And that's because we haven't got a VF here. Let's go ahead and add a div with a VF. And that's just going to conditionally show when show is true. And now this should finally get our test to be failing. So let's go ahead, save this one off and our test should now be failing. And so it is. I've actually reverted my test to the original one. You can see here we're expecting the text to exist and it doesn't exist. So what we need to do first is click on that button and then make sure we assert that the text does exist. The way we can click on a button is by importing the fire event method from testing library. Now we're going to fire a click event. So I'm going to say fire event dot click and we need to pass in the element we'd like to click on. In this case, we'd like to click on the button and we have a perfect way to select it. Remember we added a role over here, role equals show text and we're going to select the button by using that role. So we can go ahead and say screen dot get by role and we're going to get by the show text role. And if everything goes according to plan, it's going to click on that button and this should hopefully be revealed. Let's save it off and see what happens. And we can see this is actually going to fail. We're getting the same failure, that text doesn't exist. So what we're going to have to do is figure out what is going on. If you use view test utils before, you know exactly what's going on. What you traditionally would need to do is go and import next tick from view and then call next tick. What this is going to do is wait for the DOM to update and that's going to ensure that once the DOM has updated, the text has been revealed. The reason this happens is because vif is not going to execute until the next tick and that's currently not being called. So what you might do is something like await next tick. And this is really kind of the worst part of view test utils in my opinion. You need to understand how view internally works. And this is really not something you want to think about while you're writing tests. Fortunately, testing library has a better solution than await next tick and we're going to see what that is right now. And there are actually a number of ways to do this. What we're going to do is see another method from testing library and that one is called wait for. And this is going to basically allow us to wait for something to happen before we progress. Let's go ahead and see how that one works. What I'm going to do is say wait for in here and we're going to wait for this assertion to trigger. So I'm going to say wait for and it takes a callback and that's going to be my assertion. And what it's going to do is continue running this assertion until it passes. Let's go ahead and try it out. If I save this one off, with a bit of luck this is now going to pass. And so it does. What's happening here is it's going to run this assertion every 50 milliseconds for 1000 milliseconds until it returns true. If it passes 1000 milliseconds, it's just going to go ahead and fail. And this is a much better abstraction in my opinion than using something like await next tick. And that is going to let us get our test finally passing. There is one small improvement we can make and we're going to see how we can make that improvement in the next video.